Hello everyone, it's Saturday morning here in Chicago. We are on the 1st of April. I am your host, The Cowboy. This is Elliot Wave Cafe. Let's get started. All right, so welcome to Macro Cafe every single week. At the end of the week, we're taking a look at kind of what happened in the markets, what I think about them and where I think they're about to go. So before we do that, let me just, uh, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't been following around, uh, let me just kind of tell you where you can find me really quickly and then we'll jump on to some interesting charts. Basically, the main place is here on Twitter where you can find me at Elliot Cafe. So go ahead and give this a try. Uh, I just did a video yesterday on YouTube. It's the, called The Biggest Lie in the S&P 500. So you can take a look at the bearish counts that I think are slowly getting dismantled here by the price action lately in the market. So I think you'll find it interesting. There's a, a pretty decent information out there about, um, you know, what I still think uh, about the bearish counts and if they have any chance of still happening. Uh, I think those are getting greatly decreasing. Um, all right, the next place you can find me here, it's on the Pigeon and the Statue. This is a uh, newsletter, it's a daily newsletter. Uh, you can subscribe on here. Some posts will be free. Some posts are going to be covered, uh, but most of them, uh, you know, you'll be able to have access to it. And basically what it focuses on is on um, the main counts in the S&P 500, on the Dow Jones, on the NASDAQ, on Bitcoin, uh, a couple of commodities in there as well. So this will keep you up to date with what's happening in the markets overall. I write this uh, every single evening late at night and then it gets posted in the morning and it gives you a fresh look about kind of what we're following. And we've been tracking this pretty accurately here for the past several weeks. So go ahead and subscribe there. If you want to take uh, Elliott Wave you know, knowledge and market knowledge to the next level. There is a pro tier where you can, uh, you know, subscribe for free as well. This is a paid service. It's pretty expensive, but if you're serious about the markets, you're going to find a great value in here. Uh, there is a grind house uh, that tells you, um, you know, all the ETFs that I trade, all the stocks that I trade positions uh, uh, with charts, with comments, uh, everything there. And then, you know, there's daily videos. There is a steam room with articles. Uh, go ahead and check this out. I basically transfer all my services services from Telegram uh, to uh, Substack and um, you know it's just better organized and uh, much much cleaner there is a chat room as well in here so go ahead and give this a try if you wanted to upgrade all right let's go ahead and um, take a look at <clears throat> this weekly macro list and uh, you know it, it, the markets have been trending pretty well here for the past several weeks i mean this is the third week of uh, pretty strong gains into the s p 500 and into the rest of the markets and you know i don't even have the monthly charts here but i'm pretty sure they've closed uh, strongly so the month of april uh, seasonally it's a pretty strong month i've done an article about that on the pigeon and the statue and um, you know, up until maybe May, end of May, maybe even June, I think we can uh, be in a period of uh, positivity in the markets. Uh, there was a lot of bearishness coming into the sell-off with, uh, you know, the news from the bank side, with, uh, you know, kind of the Fed being on the fence about what they're going to do. And I think a lot, a lot of people kind of got caught wrong-footed here thinking that some kind of a crash was about to happen. Now, there is a lot of money sitting on the sidelines as well. I think a lot of people have money in these kind of market funds. Uh, just, uh, you know, getting uh, supposedly a decent return between 4 and 5% on some of these treasuries and they don't participate in the market. Um, and uh, the market has a very cunning way of, of, of kind of taking off with as few people on board as possible. So I don't know if this is, you know, the, the intention of uh, the Wall Street right here to start squeezing and pushing to the upside. Uh, there is still a lot of reticence about, um, you know, just not believing that this is a real thing, uh, that there could still be a lag lower. So I hear a lot of comments about that. You know, people are just a little bit unsure about what's going on in here. Definitely, we've been in a sideways consolidation. They just kind of grinded people to a halt. Um, they just made people throw their hands up in the air. But I think, um, you know, the price section here suggests uh, that you could have, um, you know, a, a decent rally. And, and if anything, maybe even a very strong rally coming up. 
since we've drip, uh, dropped below the strand line, came back, checked back on it, and now we're shooting back to the upside. Uh, if we're getting back, I mean, we're up about 4,100 already. If we're getting about 42 and even more important, 4,300 in the S&P, I think that we're going to get new all-time highs in this market. So get ready because I think um, this is what's probably going to happen here. So this is the S&P 500. Nice, decent. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the wave counts today. Again, you can check those out up here. Uh, you know, they're, they're pretty detailed. Uh, and some of, some of the posts, uh, if you scroll down, I'm looking at some longer time frames as well. I think it's a Monday from last week or something like that. Uh, but <clears throat> I just want to kind of give you my thoughts on the price action and this kind of larger macro, macro things that are kind of happening in here. I'm not talking about fundamentals, just pure price action. Um, and the kind of what I see a relationship between price and volume. I'm looking for this PPO to start trending to the upside for those moving averages to start to get further apart and starts to initiate better trending, right? We want the RSI to get above 60 towards 70 and kind of stay there and just trend, uh, trend in that, in those levels. This is OEX. So this is the index of the top 100 stocks. And uh, you can see a pretty nice close, just obviously uh, following closely the S&P 500, since that's kind of what's what's uh, what's leading this market. So very strong move, PPO moving higher. Uh, take a look at the mid caps. These have been hurt uh, for the past you know five six weeks in here with with pretty serious drops, even below the December lows. Not just the mid caps, but if you take a look at the small caps as well, right? There was a big move below these levels, um, and I was a slightly concerned that this would be probably an ABC with the continuous move down you know we could still that have happened we could still have that happening but the fact that we're holding here uh, the 200 week moving average start to push back upside after a period of indecision which i talked about last week in the macro uh, review um the more and you can now start to see you know a little bit of participation from the small caps and mid caps into these markets because they i don't think they want to get left behind so um I'm looking for this maybe following week to start to kind of get above the moving averages. And if you're getting back above 1250 here in the small cap territory, I think, uh, you know, this is done and this is probably just a simple ABC flat and you're, and you're looking much, much higher. So, um, you know, these still have a little bit more work to do, but, but I do like, uh, the fact that they're coming back. So that's, that's encouraging. Um, you know, the market is not as fractured anymore as it used to be a couple of weeks ago when, you know, the tech start, you know, was leading and it was pushing higher and the other markets were pushing lower, right? We wanted to see them, uh, kind of coming back. And just let me just show you this. I mean, at the moment, I mean, look back here, right? In the week of the March 13, um, uh, these, uh, you know, ETFs, in in the in the uh, sector uh, in the top 11 sectors right they were moving higher so you're looking at xly xlk xlc pushing to the upside while the rest of the market was pushing lower so this was a fracture but now a lot of these not only that these are leading but they're accelerating to the upside and then you know the the stocks that were they kind of gotten hurt mid-march they're starting to come back and get back a you know, some of them starting to get above zero and we still have a few that are lagging, but this is what you want to see from, uh, from a possible upcoming bull market. So let's continue to go in here. So that's, this is NDX, right? It's been strong and, and accelerating, getting even more strong, uh, PPO starting to kind of widen out in here. Beautiful weekly close. I think that these levels are getting targeted next week or in the next couple of weeks. So we're probably going to get towards 13.7 in the NASDAQ. Uh, and then once that kind of gets cleared a little bit, we're probably going to get some pullback and make more of a, larger inverted head and shoulder this is the left shoulder this is a, a, a kind of a triple double bottom in here with the right shoulder forming and if you're clearing above 13.7 you can start to begin the next bull market to the upside so that's ndx uh, dow jones was also kind of underperforming in here coming back uh, from 3200 level uh, this is a pretty decent bull flag again i'm counting this if you see in the pigeon in the setting i'm counting this as just a just a flat correction in an abc um you know or a wxy if you want but uh, you know, once you get above 34,000, I think you're going to go to new all time highs in the Dow Jones. Uh, taking a look at the growth index, uh, decent move. I mean, you had this huge piercing candle out of here. That was the signal that the growth trade, uh, you know, will, will probably accelerate. It looks pretty good. PPO moving higher. Uh, there is no arguing in here. The market, it's kind of poised to try to continue. If you're coming back below these levels, 
we can have a major failure and then all bets are off. So these whole lows here, uh, they, they need to hold on any, on any kind of setbacks. Uh, take a look at the value, which was underperforming as well. It's still, I think, underperforming growth, but coming back strongly into these moving averages. So uh, we need to see that continue as well. You know, again, just a, just a very simple uh, three-wave setback from those highs after a pretty decent impulse. Again, if we're thinking that the market's bottom uh, back some of them right in October because a lot of them uh, bottom a little bit earlier too back in the summer of last year but uh, most of the markets kind of bottom here in October November um, and and none of these lows have gotten retested or taken down a Russell uh, again just on a uh, on a small cap mid cap territory uh, here trying to come back I mean there were two weeks of indecision right when you see two weeks that the price section is not pushing lower and then the markets doesn't know what to do then you can usually rest assured that there's going to be some bullishness coming i mean look at these two right look at these two back at the end of december right and these were even cleaner dojis and that led to a pretty significant rally now you got two more let's see if it's gonna uh, mimic again Take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been struggling in here uh, to break the 29,000. Uh, I think it just did briefly last week and then pull back. The monthly close, it's really powerful, continues to look good. I think we have a major low in the market and this should continue higher. These 32,000 levels are probably going to get tagged. I'm waiting for some kind of, a, um, you know, uh, maybe a little bit more of a retracement in here. I'm not really uh, um, kind of getting a good feel for what's happening, but I do think that that overall, I think we're going to continue to trend higher and these, uh, you know, 32, 33 levels, that's a major level. It's going to get taken out and we should continue to move towards 40,000 uh, in Bitcoin. PPO, it's still to the upside. And if the stocks move, I think Bitcoin will do so as well. So watch for little pullbacks, but I think they're going to offer entry opportunities. Uh, a very important level here is 25.5. We really don't want to get much below that level. <clears throat> okay, so that's uh, Bitcoin. Ethereum, uh, I think, looks even better. Uh, had a little bit of a decent close we're climbing on this 10 week ema in here uh, uh that supports prices beautiful hammer rejection from the 50 and the 200 week uh, and i think this will trend higher you know i think we're looking towards uh 24 to 2600 in the next um you know i don't know a couple of months maybe so uh this again it's a it's a good indication of uh, of a strength here in these uh, crypto markets along with some of the alts and i talk about those in the in the in the pro videos um you know almost daily all right let's take a look at tlt um uh, this market you know we you want it to kind of stay sideways uh, why because you really don't want yields to create a lot of damage so as long as they're kind of in a you know, in a sideways move, I think they're fine. Market doesn't really like, you know, huge drops or huge rallies in any of these. Uh, but overall, uh, you know, if the bonds are moving higher here and they try to break this, maybe yields will continue to travel lower. If the Fed uh, stops and maybe the economy does a little worse, uh, you know, they might even think about cutting. But again, I, I think that that um, I think that territory right now, it's it's uh, there's a little bit of a confusion. I think the market waits to see what's going to happen with the GDP, with the new inflation data. I mean, you saw Friday we had great inflation on the PCE reports and they dropped lower. Uh, you know, that gave another boost to the market. So uh, there seems to be a lot of tailing here for the markets. Um, all, all the Fed has just got to do is just be quiet for a while and, you know, don't interfere with the, with the normal market. Um, you know, environment, right? Let's just let people buy and sell, um, you know, based on whatever they think it's happening, right? So uh, this is the 10 year treasury yield. We're still holding about this kind of 3.3, 3.4. Um, does it does it look like an ABC? Maybe, I mean, if you get back above four, you know, things can start to look ugly again. Uh, but we've kind of came back below some key moving averages. So there could be a period of consolidation, maybe even downtrend in this market. Uh, dollar, um, you know, I'm waiting for possible a C wave again, just check those updates. That's kind of what I'm looking for because I think this wave is too short. Uh, in an, uh, you know, after a big decline, you're supposed to have a little bit of an ABC and this is just you know, just a short wave up, that's a, maybe a B, and then we would be looking for a, some kind of a C wave to kind of begin things. If you're breaking, starting to break below 102, close below 102, I think you can maybe just continue to move lower towards the 200 week moving average. And if you start to break 100 on the dollar, um, you know, then uh, then things could look a little uglier. But um, you know, we could, we could just kind of be sideways in here, right, without creating a lot of havoc in the markets. So not really, sure what's going on in here my main 
uh, kind of focus right now is to see if we're getting a slight pullback uh, in the dollar maybe over the next uh, maybe over the next couple of weeks or so all right uh, gsg this is the commodity index i think this one had a pretty interesting fail below this kind of 20 level coming back uh, there might be some interesting things coming up in commodities and in oil as well. So uh, if we can kind of clear the zone and clear this moving average, we could move back towards 23. So there could be a little interest in the commodities. Not a lot of volume, though. I mean, look at this weekly move. It's just been very, uh, you know, very kind of slow. And with the drop in inflation, you know, the commodities are not really... Uh, you know, should be that enticing here. I, I'd rather own stocks than some of these commodities. Then gold, again, just a double week without being, I mean, it tried to break 2000 twice. In my view, I think gold will pull back. Um, and um, it's probably not going to continue the rally until maybe in the fall. Uh, probably by June, July, I think, you know, we're going to continue to sell off until then. Again, not being able to break in here. There's a little bit of a triangle, maybe one slight push higher next week or something. But I think this is going to come back towards 1900 and maybe even break this. So take a look at those counts. But that's kind of my view on gold in here. These are massive levels that it's coming into. And I think there's going to be a lot of fighting up here. Then take a look at copper. I like copper. You know, nice bullish move. Um, this week was not, you know, as, as performant. But this looks like a nice setback against uh, an ongoing impulse. So, um, you know, if, if next week we're trending higher, I think copper has a decent chance of getting back towards 450, 460. And then here is oil. It just, you know, right? Doesn't this chart look almost similar to the commodity charts um, <clears throat> in there? So coming back into some resistance levels towards 79, and I talked about, you know, being some good opportunities in oil with my members uh, as we were kind of coming up into these lows. And, you know, here we are a couple of weeks later, kind of trending higher. We were, uh, what is this? I mean, 10% on the week. That's not bad for WTIC. Uh, but coming into resistance, so now we just kind of wait in there. Um, you know, you can see the EFA, so all, the, all these kind of markets outside the United States. Uh, you know, beautiful performance here for the past couple of weeks as well. And these highs here are probably getting challenged and yet taken out. All right, VIX, you know, massive collapse. This was the, the banking fear up into 30. Um, and just, just mean revert back towards 18. I mean, now we got to drop below the 17, guys. If we drop below the 17 and stay between 17 and 15, this is going to be a big tailwind for the markets overall. So uh, I'm going to close here shortly. I want to show you one more thing. Uh, basically, we're looking at the breadth, new highs versus new lows in um, the New York Stock Exchange, in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ. And if you can see, uh, as the bear market was ongoing, I mean, look at how much new lows we were having back then and, and how much red was on these charts then from october 13 we started to kind of get more green appearing in here uh then we had a couple of setbacks and and there was another uh, a flush and 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 you know new 52 52 week lows here a bit more bearishness right in this kind of month of uh uh, February and March, these couple of months, and um, you know now we're coming back to the upside again. So this kind of shows you a transition from a big bear market uh, towards the beginning of a possible new, new new bull market, where the 52 week lows are getting less and less. You're getting more green on the screen, more participation. Things are looking better, um, and then the fear slowly subsides out of this market. And and uh, there was a, you know again just just uh, just big beautiful breath here for the past uh, for the past week or so, and we want to see that. That continue um, a big failure in here i think there would be you know a, a, a you know a, a bad sign for the market so for example if you're coming back again uh, towards these lows then um then things could start to look um to look to look pretty ugly and then you know i don't think that we're going to return to any bullishness until maybe in the you know back into into the fall uh but you know, a lot of these stocks are looking good. We're getting into an earnings season. So again, we have seasonality on our side. And I'm going to close off with that. Uh, you know, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to come and visit me on Twitter. Don't forget the daily drip. Uh, this is where you can find most of my accounts. And if you want to upgrade to, uh, you know, something more serious, you can find me on LA Wave Cafe Pro. So thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate you all being here as always. Uh, thanks to all new subscribers. Uh, don't forget to you know, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.